Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we're joined by Jan Seismans, who is the mobile app security evangelist at AppDome. AppDome has developed a patented no-code mobile security and development platform that allows developers and DevSecOps to build secure Android and iOS apps in seconds. Jan joins us today to tell us more about AppDome and the importance of mobile app security. Thank you for coming along, Jan, and welcome to the Jam. Well, thank you very much for inviting us, Tom. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, well, let's just jump straight into it. For an enterprise or IT or security manager who is unaware of AppDome, could you share more about the brand and its key products and offerings? Yeah, yeah. Um, we are the one-stop shop for mobile app defense. On AppDome, um, brands, consumer brands specifically, um, have the ability to create a security model to protect their mobile apps against cyber threats, against mobile fraud, against mobile malware, against uh, mobile cheat capabilities. That's typically for mobile games, as well as um, integrate AppDome with their, um, or indicate AppDome protections with their web application firewalls and protect against mobile bots and others. So it is a, uh, as you said correctly, thank you. It is a no code solution. Um, it allows um, the uh, cyber team to have full visibility management and control over that specific security model that they want to implement. Um, but, and it allows the developers to then implement that security model without having to make any changes to how they build their apps today. So there's no disruption to their build process. AppDome fully integrates inside of their DevOps workflows, big words, but basically means that from a, from a developer standpoint, all they see is an API, uh, is a, a call from their net, their system, build system into AppDome, and then um, the uh, required security model gets implemented. One more thing that's really important is that with each build on AppDome, AppDome provides an artifact of proof um, showing to both the cyber team as well as to the dev team that indeed the um, required security model gets implemented. So what that solves, the problem that solves is this constant battle that exists today between dev and between cyber um, and where uh, cyber teams now have the visibility and the control over the security model and the dev team doesn't have to worry about having to provide a pen test or some kind of code analysis or code scan or anything else to prove to the cyber team that the correct protections are indeed in the app. Well, now, I guess, why should um, businesses pay more attention to mobile security? Yeah, um, that is a very, very good question. And I think the answer lies, um, and thank you for asking, and the answer lies in consumer sentiment. As it turns out, AppDome um, surveys consumers around the world on an annual basis on their expectations of mobile app security. And one of the, um, the most interesting elements that we found is that uh, here in APAC, um, consumers overwhelmingly are preferring mobile apps as their digital channel. So in APAC, 58% of consumers have said excuse me, that they uh, prefer mobile as their digital channel. In fact, um, mobile is four times as high as web as a, from a preference from a mobile, from a digital channel. So consumers have clearly stated, we want to engage with brands using the mobile apps. So what that leads is um, if, if a brand, an app maker, is um, looking at protecting the traditional network edge. Um, what they're missing is they're no longer cyber resilient because they're no longer putting their cyber investments where their customers are and where their revenues are coming from. So for brands to be fully cyber resilient, they need to put their cyber investments there where their customers are and there where their customers are engaging with the brand and where the revenue is coming from. And that again, um, as it turns out, according to our survey, that is overwhelmingly coming from mobile these days. Well, now, how do you foresee the landscape of mobile bot threats evolving in the near future? And what new challenges do you anticipate them bringing? Yeah, so um, again, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I, I would like to refer to the exploit economy. 
And so what is the export economy? The export economy um, are people that are building malware and other people that are using that malware to run exploits. And the exploit economy is all based on automation. The exploit economy is all based on finding ways to, um, I'll, I'll use the word, to dupe, to trick users into believing that they're, um, that they're doing uh, the right things on their mobile device, but they're actually granting permissions to malware that got installed on their mobile device to then um, run its malicious programs. And this exploit economy, as I said, is based on automation. It is, um, they only need very, very low success rate in order to fund their malicious activities. Um, but they're also continuously innovating. And so if you are a, um, a brand that is uh, looking at, um, when I say traditional, I mean security solutions from a year ago, from two years ago, your traditional cyber protections, jailbreak and root prevention, man in the middle protection, obfuscation, encryption, um, you are behind the eight ball because the, the new modern tools that are being applied by uh, these malicious actors are a lot more advanced than what your traditional cyber protections, specifically if you're looking just at protecting the network edge, what they are doing. So mobile bots, um, I'm gonna give you a, um, a simple example, okay? Um, I'm gonna bet that you have a niece or a friend of a friend or maybe a younger sister that loves um, Taylor Swift. And she has been trying to buy a ticket to the ERA store and um, so she goes in and she can do maybe one effort a second if she's really, really fast with her fingers or one effort every five seconds to try to purchase a ticket. Well, a malicious person goes out there, creates a bot to do the work. They can do 10,000 transactions per second. So all that they get to do is they get to then buy the ticket at cost and then resell it on the aftermarket price at 5x, 10x the price. That's an example of how bots negatively impact um, consumer uh, ex experiences. But now if you take this the same technology, the same bot, and you apply that to trying to break into your bank account, it does 10,000 attempts per second to try to use credentials that stolen somewhere on the dark web to try to break into your bank account and then do an account takeover or do anything else while you are asleep. And so by the time you wake up, Everything has happened. And so um, that is the scary thing. And so the, the tools that these malicious people are using um, advance all the time. And uh, traditional cyber protections do not protect against that anymore. So the key thing for brands, um, and sorry for the long-winded story, but the key thing for brands is to be able to um, identify these new threats very quickly and then update their security model very, very quickly in a very rapid, agile way without asking the developers to have to do any work, without putting the onus on the developers to but very quickly version that security model so that once they detect the presence of these attacks in production against their mobile apps, they can then quickly use a data-driven decision to um, make changes to their security model and um, and, and protect uh, their consumers before these acts, uh, these attacks can be launched at scale. Well, I guess staying on that topic a little bit more, in the face of those emerging mobile bot threats, how is AppDome preparing to stay ahead and continue providing robust security solutions? And could you give any insights into AppDome's research and development initiatives that are sort of aimed at anticipating and mitigating the future mobile threats? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, there, there are several ways, and thank you for allowing me to get into a little bit more into detail on that. Um, but um, the, the key thing that I would like to highlight, um, there's two things I would like to highlight. First of all, AppDome, um, we have a um, security research team. And this team, uh, their job is to be on the lookout for new threats. Um, they live where the malicious people live. So they live on, on the dark web, they live in uh, telegram groups, and they learn about new threats and new exploits that are being used. And so when they figure those out, they work with our engineering team to test and validate 
Does Abdom actively protect against those new threats or those new variants? And if not, what can we do to, um, to, to make changes to um, how Abdom um, builds protections to mobile apps to now protect against those? Um, and that brings me to kind of the second thing, um, Abdom's um, architecture is, um, is very modular. Um, again, I'm going to go a little bit into just a tiny little bit of, of technical stuff, but it is based on a service, um, um, a microservice architecture in the backend. So when um, a brand would choose to make a, a um, define a security model, they basically come onto the platform and they toggle on a set of protections. Um, and so the platform on the backend has an AI engine that then um, selects and creates a, um, a code base to implement using a set of plugins and parameters to just implement that specific security model. So it's a very flexible uh, way for us to, uh, that allows our engineers to build new protections against new threats. And that's the key thing I wanted to say. So we have a security research team that is out there that is constantly looking for new threats. They work with our engineering team to test and validate if Abdom effectively protects against that and not they then implement, make those changes to the platform. But the key thing is for our customers, the next time that they come onto the platform and they build their security model, they get then those uh, updated protections to those, uh, uh, to those security uh, elements that they subscribe. Okay, so if they, if somebody has come up with, for example, now specifically a new jailbreak tool or new routing tool or a new way to run a, um, a, a bot attack specifically, and the customer is protecting or is subscribing to that, and they subscribe against our synthetic anti-fraud solutions, um, then uh, they get the updated protections the next time they build on the platform, all included within their service contract. I'm glad you touched on AI in that answer because I was going to ask you about that. Uh, well, I guess one uh, more question. Could you share how indiv individuals or enterprise end users are seeking to collaborate with Aptome and sort of can discover more information about the company? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so... It's really simple. It's www.abdom.com. Um, we have a, um, um, our website has a link also to our knowledge base. We have a very, very extensive knowledge base where people can go find more about specific threats um, uh, and, and get services and then contact um, Abdom. We do have um, a person um, on our uh, uh, service delivery team who's based in Sydney. I'm based here in, in Singapore and we cover the APAC region. Um, with uh, a fairly large group um, here. Um, and so uh, that's the easiest way to get in touch with us, www.abdom.com. Um, and then from there, uh, you start your journey with us. Awesome. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the jam, Jan, and learning more about Abdom and what you guys are doing. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from Abdom very soon. Well, Tom, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. And I look forward to talking to you again um, shortly.